Hi, I'm Judith from Just Jude Designs and this is my free tutorial on how to make these lovely scrappy zippy pouches. So as you can see here, there's quite a selection of sizes. You can make your pouches in any shape or size you want. We've got little cute ones here that are pencil case size. We've got some medium sized ones here, which would be great for putting projects in or a little bit of hand sewing or use them as toiletry bags or makeup bags. And we've got a large one here, which I've made out of my denim scraps. So this is for all you upcyclers and denim lovers out there. So the tutorial will take you step by step through making this size pouch here. But at the end, there will be a screenshot of all the measurements to make all of the pouches that you see here. So let's get sewing. So to start making our pouches, we need a foundation layer. I am using this Heavy Sew in Violin, which is available in my online shop. And, or you can use greaseproof paper to sew onto. Obviously, if you're sewing onto paper, you will be tearing this off at the end. Um, similarly with stitch and tear, you can use as well if you have some of that and you will tear that away at the end. You could also use wadding, but not fusible wadding. But I like this because it stays in the pouch once you've sewn your strips on like quilt as you go. You've already got your, your structure quilted into the front and back of your pouches. So you need two pieces. They can be any size really. I'm working on a six by seven and a half, six this way, seven and a half that way. Two pieces for the front and two pieces for the back. And we're going to draw on some lines at 45 degree angles and these are just guidelines. They're not for you to rigidly stick to sewing each piece of fabric down onto. They're just for you to maintain the angle the whole way along your foundation layer so that you don't suddenly start going a bit wonky. And you, your lines the two pieces, your lines want to be going opposite directions and they can be mountains going that way or they can be peak, um, little valleys coming down this way. And that all depends on where you start, which corner you start at to sew on your lines. So this one, these ones I started in the top right hand corner and I'll show you what I did. There's a 45 degree line on your mat and I just put it a couple of inches beyond that, lined it up on the squares on my mat, drew my first line and then I put my ruler at one and a half inches from the first line, drew my next one and so on. And then this one you wanted to be coming the opposite direction. If you want valleys, if you want your strips to be coming pointing down the way, um, again you can use your 45 degree line coming this way um, and just position that on and draw your first line and then you've got some guidelines from there. You just have to remember to do um, the opposite direction for the other piece. If you're working with paper however, because it's the grease proof paper is see-through, you can mark all of them the same way and have one going that way and then just flip the other one over that way and sew on this side. So that's a little bit easier. I'll show you uh, a good application for the paper a little bit later. So once you've got your two pieces marked up, it's time to start applying our strips of fabric. Now I have my box of teal and turquoise scraps here which I you can go um, random with lots of different colours and just go mad. You can colour theme your pouches. Um, it's entirely up to you. What you need to do with your strips um, is make sure that they have parallel sides and that they're ironed and they can be all different lengths. Um, we're going to start at a corner and work our way along start here and work away along there. So your first piece could actually be a rectangle or a square or some, a piece that's just a little bit wider. Don't go too small at your corners because you'll have a seam allowance eaten into it there and you'll have a seam allowance eaten into it there. So you don't want to end up with a tiny little speck of fabric there. So give yourself a decent enough 
pace to get started with. And you can go up to your first line if you want. You can stop short of it. If you stop short of it, just make sure that it's the edge is running parallel. Hope you can see that running parallel to your line. You also need every piece of fabric we're going to put on needs to be longer than the piece of violin than the foundation. So you want your pieces to run beyond the edges of the violin. So our first piece, we just pin it on like that. And we'll take another strip. Now, what you might be tempted to do is just to put that right sides together and you're looking there and thinking oh well that's long enough there that'll be fine I'll pin that on and I'll sew it down but what happens is when you iron it out it's like uh oh I'm actually not long enough here so what I do is overlap a little bit to allow for your quarter inch seam and then maneuver your strip up and down and that way you can you can see how much length you actually need this is the thing with sewing with sewing angles and um, they can throw you a little bit so I'm going to leave that much longer than it looks like I need and I'm going to just pin those two together I'm going to sew a quarter inch down here and then iron it out if you are sewing on paper, you will want to have an 80 needle in and you'll want to drop your stitch length down to one and a half because that will make it much easier to tear the paper out without disturbing the stitches. Sewing through the violin and your fabric, you can use an 80 or a 90 needle and just your normal stitch length will be fine. So I don't have a quarter inch foot on my machine. I just move my needle into the quarter inch position and then I can use the edge of the foot. I'm starting where the fabrics are overlapping there. And finishing just beyond the violin. And I'm just going to give that a quick press. And that's our first strip on there. So then I'll take another strip. Um, let's see. Keep your longer strips for, you know, the longer diagonals there in the middle. So again, I'm going to lay it over the top. Give myself a nice wee bit of alliance there. And then we'll put them right sides together. Put my pin in. Take it to the machine and sew another quarter inch seam through all the layers. And another little press. Okay, and you keep building up your layers. Quilt as you go. These ones here um, are a little bit wide. They're okay for the ends, but I wouldn't put them in the middle. I, for this proportion of a pouch, I'm keeping my strips under a two inch width. Um, you can go much thinner than that if you want to. A lot of these are between one, one and a half. But this one, for example, I would probably cut in half and use that um, rather than go for a big fat wide one um, just because of the proportions of this size of pouch. The same with these ones. I think they're just a little bit too wide, but I can trim them down. But I have plenty, as you can see, I have plenty of skinny strips. Maybe that little short one I could use in the corner there. And you can organize yourself ahead of time if you want to. You know, you might want to work out your order. I tend to just grab, sew it on, grab, sew it on, and then work your way until the whole piece of violin is covered with your scraps. Now that you have your um, first piece of violin completely covered with strips, what we want to do is we want to trim off all this excess back to the original shape of the violin. Our original dimensions for this one were six and a half by seven. Okay. 
in the last little bit. And now you have your first quilted panel, looking nice and neat and tidy, all quilted, nicely ironed, and all that needs is a partner to go with it on this side. So you want to make three more of these. You want one to match that one, and you're going to want to make uh, another two for the other side of the pouch. Ta-da! We have four pieces. I have sewn these two together and pressed the seam open. I need to do the same with these two. Um, before you do that, just sort of decide on which two you want to put together. Move them around so that you don't have duplicate fabrics too close to each other. Um, and obviously, um, I want my mountains to be going the same direction on the front as the back so I have placed them the right way around. So there we have our two pieces we have a front and a back and they're both the same size. Now you want to measure them so that you can cut your two pieces of lining to the same size. This one is coming out 11 and a half by seven and a half so I'm going to cut two pieces of lining that size and I'm going to interface them with some lightweight fusible Violin on them as well just to add another little bit of um, structure and body to the pouch. Then I'm going to be showing you how to assemble the, the pouch with um, a 10 inch zipper and some covered zip tabs. So here I have my two lining pieces cut the same size as my um, exterior pieces and I have fused some lightweight woven violin onto the wrong sides of both of them and you can find that also in my web shop. I've also cut two pieces of fabric that are one and a half by four inches and I have ironed the short ends under by a quarter of an inch, brought those together and ironed it in half here and I've done that with both of them and these are going to be the ends for our zipper. Now with zippers, with plastic zippers, you don't have to have the exact same size um, but you need to at least have it that size or longer um, because we can trim longer zips down to size. We always start with the zipper pull end of the zip because it's the one that splays out. The other end sits nice and neatly. So what I like to do is do a little stitch on the machine just across there to hold that in place. I'll do that quickly now. Like so, and that just means it's easier for us to put the zipper tab over the end. Now our first zipper tab is gonna come up to the, you'll see a little plastic nub sometimes it might be metal you want to bring the tab put your zipper inside the tab and bring the folded edge up to that little plastic nub but not beyond it and what we're going to do is get them level the front and the back and we're going to sew across here quite close to the edge and through all the layers You don't have to have your zipper fit in yet for this part. Like so. And it's caught in at the back. Then what we're going to do is we're going to open the tab there and trim back the excess zipper tape level with the seam allowance. And we're also going to trim the sides of our zipper tabs level with the width of our zipper. So that's one side of our tab in. Now if you have a zip that's too long what we want to do is we're going before we put the other tab onto the other end we're going to measure and see where we need to trim our zip. Now you always want to have a generous inch maybe an inch and a quarter of your zipper tab here within the edge of the pouch. So you've got about an, a quarter of an inch overhang here and if we line that up at the other end of our um, pouch that is where we would trim our zipper level with the width of our pouch. Now that means this time with this tab 
the zipper goes all the way in right up to the top of the zipper tab right up to the fold and again we're going to sew across here like so once again open up the zipper tab peel it back and trim your zipper level with your seam allowance and trim the sides level with the zipper tape so that's how we treat our zipper um, for a nice neat finish at the end then what you're going to be doing is just centering this um, eventually it will have about a quarter of an inch slightly less overhang at each end but that's what you can do with any um, zipper that is slightly longer than what you need okay so let's start our assembling of our pouch we're going to take one of the exterior pieces on our zip and place them right sides together and you're going to center the zipper so that you've roughly the same amount of overhang at each side and the top of the zipper tape is level with the top of our pouch then we take a piece of lining and it goes right sides down on top and again we're matching it up at the sides and at the top edge here we get some pins And I'm just going to put a few e pins in just to hold it all in place like so and it's level at the sides as well so this is where we put our zipper foot in and I'm going to show you um, what my zipper foot looks like and how um, I recommend the setup of your zipper foot so on a faff sewing machine the zipper foot is number four and you must be able to read the number four it should be the right way up you don't want to put your zipper foot on that way it's upside down you want it to be this way and you have the option of clipping it onto the left side or the right side I always recommend clipping the zipper foot onto the left side and then moving your needle all the way over to the left so that it's nice and flush with the left hand edge of the zipper foot So that's my zipper foot on and I'm going to bring my needle all the way over as far as it will go and now you can see it's nice and flush here and that means I can keep my project out to the left and more importantly the zipper teeth the bulky bit of my pouch will be at this side and not in at this side now we can't really see where the teeth are but with these standard closed ended zips you want them to be you want to be sewing about a quarter of an inch in now there's no quarter inch guide on our zipper foot but what I use is the edge of the number four if my needles all the way out to the left look at the number four and the long straight edge of the number four I will try and keep my fabric the edge of my fabric running level with the edge of the number four as best I can now the bulky zipper pull is here so I'm going to have to move that I have my stitch length up at number three so to move the zipper pull I'm going to keep my needle down in my fabric to anchor my position and I'm just going to move it down I'll have to move it back up again when I get to that next position Okay, and press if it's down. So this is what I'm trying to keep my eye on. The edge of the number four. Just checking the edge of my zipper tape hasn't moved on the inside there. Yep, there it is, I can see it. So I've got to the, the, the bumpy bit of the zipper pull again. So needle down in. This time I'm going to lift my presser foot up, grab the zipper pull and move it back out of my way. So that's it, gone. Press foot back down. Yeah, we're all nicely still lined up. So again, I'm going to try and keep the edge of the fabric level with the side of the number four. 
all the way to the end of the zipper tab and we'll have a look at this that's not bad so that's one side of your um, pouch onto the zip you're going to iron the lining back so that the two wrong sides are together give that a nice press and then we're going to top stitch quite close to this edge here from the front side all the way down so I'm just going to give it a little press here which makes it easier to sew and again the teeth the bumpy bit need to be out to the left so I'm going to put my project in this way I'm keeping my zipper foot on and I'm sewing about an eighth of an inch away from where the, the front of the pouch joins the zipper and what that line of stitching does it neatens it from the front but it also means that your lining won't creep up into the zipper accidentally when you're opening it and closing it so now we need to put the other side of the pouch onto the zipper so to put the other side of our um, pouch onto our zipper I'm going to put that one to the side and take our remaining exterior piece first and have it laid down on the table first then the one we've just been sewing we put on top so that the two right sides are together you want to line up the sides and the top of the zipper with the top of the pouch and then our final piece our last lining piece goes right sides down and again lining up at the sides and the top and the way you know that you have layered this correctly is the two linings will be right sides together and the two exteriors will be right sides together if you don't have those two things matching up you haven't layered it correctly so that's one way to check that you've got the layering right again a couple of pins and I'm going to sew about a quarter of an inch all the way down again using my the edge of my number four my zipper pull there so press a foot up the zipper pull back out of the way and we'll just sew that last little bit okay so you end up with something like that this is the first side that we put on so you can see how neat the top stitching allows it just to lie nice and flat we need to do the same with this side then so I need to get this ironed nice and flat and top stitch all the way down here so that it looks the same as the other side And there we are we've got our zipper in everything's running how it should do and it's looking nice and neat on the back as well so the last thing to do is to um, bring the two exteriors right sides together and our join it would be nice if we could get our little seams matching up there you can use um, wonder clips or just pin it the little zipper tabs you want to push those down towards the lining like that and on the inside you just want to make sure that the tops of your two exterior panels are sitting together and we'll put a little pin in there oh we must remember to open the zip 
always forget that bit. Open our zipper, there we go. So on the other side we're going to push our zipper tabs all the way down and put a little pin in there. I'll maybe pin that from this side. So all my pins are on the same side. And then you can pin the rest of it. Once you've anchored those zipper tabs level, you can get everything else pinned after that. And you want to be starting here and sewing a quarter inch all the way around, all the way and stopping here. So you'll actually leave a gap in the middle of the bottom edge of the lining. Don't need our zipper foot anymore for that. We can go back to our normal foot, either a quarter inch foot or a standard foot with your needle in the quarter inch position. I'm going to use a little reverse stitch just where the, my opening is so that it doesn't rip back further whenever I'm turning it through. Just take your time going over the bumpy zipper tab and it is quite thick there. That's us. Over. So now we can take the pins out. And you can take a little tiny snip out of the corners at an angle just to reduce the bulk when we're turning it round the other way. Be careful not to cut into your stitches. And now we're going to turn it through. So if you get your thumbs all the way down to the bottom corner and push that one through and then it just slides all over the top of the pouch like that. Let's get our other corner pushed out. Where is it? There it is. Now your zipper tabs, you want to get your finger in underneath the zipper tab and pop them out like that, so they're nice and flat at the top. Same on the other side, get your finger in underneath and pop them out. Okay, I'll have a look at it and see what we're looking like. Very nice. So all that remains to be done is to stitch up the gap in the lining and you can either do that by hand or you can do it on the machine. Give it a good press and you have your finished pouch. There we go. Tuck that down inside. Get our corners right into our corners. And there you have one finished pouch ready to be used for sewing accessories or makeup or toiletries or gifted to somebody with lots of lovely chocolates inside. For the little pencil case, you want to start with one piece of foundation layer or violin, which is four and a half inches tall by 18 inches wide and you draw on vertical lines at four and a half inches so you get four little squares and then you draw a diagonal line through each square as you see here and those are your 45 degree, degree guidelines. Then we're going to start to add our fabric from the bottom left hand corner working our way across the whole piece to the top right hand corner. 
So you can see here I've covered my base layer in scraps, worked all the way across the whole piece and now I'm trimming off the excess from all sides back to the original size of the foundation layer. And when you've got it trimmed, you can start to cut it into the four and a half inch squares. When you've got your four little squares, you'll have two for the front of the pencil case and two for the back, and you can switch them around whatever way you want them to be. For the denim pouch, um, we start with some paper and we draw on our 45 degree lines. And the reason we're using paper for the denim pouch is because when we join the two panels together, the seams would be really thick if we had sewn all the pieces onto violin or wadding. The paper will be torn out at the end, so that means when we sew the two panels together, they will not have a big bulky seam down the middle. So you apply your strips in exactly the same way as we did before, working from one corner all the way across the paper to the next. You want to be using a jeans needle size 90 for this. My stitch length is at number two, um, smaller than normal for um, making sure the paper comes away easily without disturbing the stitches. And you want to be using a good strong thread in your machine. I've used a polyester thread here for working with the denim. So once you've got the paper completely covered in your denim strips, give it a really good press and then trim off the excess level with the original size of the paper. And then you're ready to start tearing the paper away really carefully so as not to disturb the stitches. And you'll need to do this four times. You want two panels for the front and two panels for the back. So when you've got your four panels made and paired, you want to sew them together. You want a generous quarter of an inch here. Don't be skimping on your quarter inch seam just because of the thicker textiles that we're sewing here. And you want to go back to a normal stitch length. Bring it back up to two and a half or a three. And this time you're going to um, iron the joining seam open and repeat for the other two panels. Now because this was made on originally on paper, there's no um, quilted layer in it, so I have spray basted my panels onto a piece of the heavy sewing violin. And now I'm just quilting some um, lines of stitching on the front of the pouch. Um, and that will give it a little bit more structure and stability, but also it will give it a quilted feel and look. For the multi pouch, this is also sewn onto paper like the denim pouch. Then you remove your paper and apply your wadding or your violin in behind and quilt it as desired. To finish off all of the pouches, take a little piece of ribbon, fold it over and snip a point in the end, feed it through your zipper and create a loop as so.
I hope you had fun with my tutorial. If you'd like lots more inspiration, free tutorials, patterns and classes, do check out my website. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook.